that great mighty ohm is roaring over the universe. And a little gentle light, you know, sometimes in the movies you see, the light nearer the boat is strong, but outside you can't see it. It spreads out. The light of God is so spread out in the sunlight that His light is hidden. But as you go inside, it's very strong, but very mild. That light wraps me all over. That light is so wonderful, the light of all light, the light that lights the candle, the lights the atoms, lights my speech, lights my voice, lights the souls of you all. I see the galaxy of souls coming out of that light. Where do stars come from? Where do atoms come from? Where do pictures in the movie show come from? From the light in the booth. So from the booth of eternity, the sphere of light is producing in this center the pictures of all light. As I have talked to you, that great sound, the great cosmic voice, takes away my breath. And I see the other side of the picture, it's so beautiful. This is just the meager side of that light. Look at the movies and you will see they're all pictures, light and shadows. That's what we are, light and shadows of the Lord. Light and shadows of the Lord, nothing else than that. What makes us feel we are flesh and bone. That's wrong. At night time we will all see that you have lost that consciousness. Night time is your real existence. This is your false existence. This is a state of hypnosis. Under hypnosis you can eat salt and be made to think it's sugar. That's what God is doing to us. It's a cosmic hypnosis. And when you remain in Om, when you practice his Kriya, you are no longer in that hypnosis. That's much more enjoyable than this terrible hypnosis which God has subjected us to. And he knows that he, in a way he has not done right by us. He's very sorry for creating us. He suffers with us. But he has no way to get you back because he has given you independence to reject him or accept him. That's the greatness of God, that he gave you the same independence, not as much as he had. But he has given the independence to reject him or accept him. A God that forced his love upon us wouldn't be a God. But that is beauty, that he has so much power and everything. But he has given us the power to reject him or accept him. If you accept him, everything will be fun and joy. And you will be able to show others that are dreaming nightmares. that the Lord is not bad as they think. You know, you think Jesus Christ was going through great agony, but his desire was so much to liberate others that he didn't mind even the crucifixion. He could have avoided it. But he loved God so that he didn't mind that some misunderstood him and crucified him. So it is that you don't mind your body or anything when you have that great happiness within you. You want to give that to all. And I do hope that you intensify the depth of your practice of prayer and prayer. Prayer must be there. Prayer doesn't mean beggary, but pray for the love of God. The highest thing that you have wanted is the love of God. That's what he doesn't want to give, unless he's sure. Once he gives his love, he will never take it away from you. And when you pray and you... I remember one boy, and I said, we'll see Krishna today. He was praying, praying, Krishna, please come to me, please. I shall never go to bed until you come. And as soon as the cock crew, the other boy said, Oh, let's go to bed now, Krishna won't come, you know. I said, what? What do you mean? I shall never go to sleep. As I said that, in the blinding flash, Krishna came to me. I said, there he is. He said, I don't see him. I said, you're blind. 
my dad came up with my hand and he saw for a flickering moment. But that was my determination. I never go to sleep. I never go to sleep. And when I was least expecting it came. So he who has given us this joy, think of him. Whatever you do, give it to him. Do that. And you will find him all the time with you. He who watcheth me always, I watch him always. To the flowers and the stars and human beings, he never loses sight of me, nor I lose sight of him. <laughs>